Assalamu alaikum everyone in acyanotic heart diseases today we are going to discuss another very important topic that is patent ductus arteriosus so what is ductus arteriosus it is a normal connection between the pulmonary artery and the descending aorta before the birth that is during the antenatal period it is a normal connection that blood from the pulmonary arteries directly enters into the aorta without passing through the non functional lungs as we know that the lungs of the baby or the fetus are not fully functional before the birth and becomes functional after the birth so this pet this ductus arteriosus becomes the ligamentum arteriosum after the birth and soon after the birth it closes so it basically it it becomes congenital heart defect if it remains patent in some individuals so it is specially seen in very low birth weight infants with the pulmonary artery diseases and also associated with the maternal rubella infections in the early pregnancy so the female to male ratio is 2 ratio 1 now look at this diagram as you can see here that normally during the pregnancy that is before the birth in the antenatal period the blood from the pulmonary arteries enters into the aorta because the lungs are not mature and not fully functional before the birth but this is the case of patent ductus arteriosus as you can see here that there is a more pressure in the aorta so after the birth if it remains patent that it this pathway remains patent then blood from the aorta enters back into the pulmonary arteries and from the pulmonary arteries this blood enters into the lungs or into the pulmonary circulation and then again the uh, oxygenated it becomes oxygenated and enters into the left atrium and the left ventricle in this way there is more load on the left atrium and the left ventricle and the hypertrophy of the left side of the heart occurs as you can see here that more blood from the aorta goes back into the pulmonary circulation so there is more pressure on the pulmonary blood vessels as a result at the later stages pulmonary hypertension also develops in these patients so the complications includes that hypertrophy of the left side of the heart and at the later stages that pulmonary hypertension and this pulmonary hypertension leads to the hypertrophy of right, right ventricle as well so in this way at the end there is biventricular failure or congestive heart failure occurs in these patient it is a complication of this patent ductus arteriosus remember it is a cyanotic heart disease now look at this pathophysiology if the ductus remains patent the blood shunts from aorta into the pulmonary artery that is from high pressure area to the low pressure area the extent of the shunt depends upon the size of the ductus and on the ratio of the resistance as we have discussed previously on the diagram that work load on the left ventricle is increased and later the pulmonary hypertension may occur which leads to the heart failure now come to the clinical features of the pda it it is asymptomatic if the defect is very small but if the defect is large then on the history breathlessness while feeding that is patient becomes shortness patient develops the shortness of breath while feeding because of the pulmonary congestion and pulmonary hypertension and there is repeated attacks of the respiratory tract infections so this respiratory tract infections are also because of the same reason that is pulmonary congestion and slow growth on history these points are very important on on inspection there is growth retardation or slow growth and on palpation there is bounding pulse by with wide pulse pressure because of the continuous flow of the blood from aorta back into the pulmonary arteries so less blood enters into the uh, less, less blood enters into the systemic circulation due to less blood enters into the systemic circulation less blood supply to the viscera's and less perfusion to the viscera's occurs as a result there is bounding weak pulses with this widened pulse pressure is because of more systolic pressure when there is slow blood supply to the various organs there is compensatory increase in the systolic blood pressure the contractions become more so due to increase systolic blood pressure the widened pulse pressure occurs this pulse pressure is basically a difference between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure and it becomes wide when there is more systolic pressure in the patent ductus arteriosus and the apex beat may be shifted because of the cardiomegaly as we have discussed that hypertrophy occur which leads to cardiomegaly there is left parasternal heave and continuous thrill in the left second intercostal space in the pulmonary area and on the auscultation there is a classical continuous machinery murmur which may be pain systolic or which may be pain diastolic throughout the 
Sisley or throughout the diastole, there is a entering of blood from the aorta into the from the aorta into the pulmonary circuit. So there is pan systolic or pan diastolic machinery murmur. It is a characteristic feature of this PDA, and there is loud P2 sound. This loud P2 sound is because of the pulmonary hypertension in these patients. Now come to the diagnosis that how we can diagnose these patients on the chest x-ray there is left sided enlargement is pronounced and there is left atrial enlargement seen as a double counter or double density sign on the chest x-ray there is increased pulmonary vascular markings because of the pulmonary hypertension ECG shows normal results if the small PDA but if the PDA is large then there is biventricular hypertrophy as we have discussed previously on the echocardiogram it is normal if the ductus is small but if it is large then biventricular enlargement as well as ductus can be visualized through the suprasternal notch on the cardiac catheterization it indicates either normal or increased pressure in the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery because of the pulmonary hypertension now come to the management Man medical management includes the endomethacin or ibuprofen these are the and NSAID drugs that is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs it should be given in especially the low birth low birth weight infants in 0.2 mg per kg IV for three doses 8 to 12 hours apart but the contraindications of the endomethacin includes renal compromise thrombocytopenia sepsis and the GIT or renal bleeding so these are the contraindications and should be avoided in these patients so the surgical management is the treatment or treatment of choice or the definition treatment trans catheter PDA closure is routinely performed procedure the small PDA are generally closed with intravascular coils but moderate to large PDAs may be closed with umbrella like device or with the catheter introduced into the sac in which several coils are released in this way the and the other method routinely used is ligation and then surgical closure or the separation of the pulmonary artery and the and the aorta descending aorta so this was whole about the patent ductus arteriosis so let's end this lecture with this scenario for the evaluation he does well until the sixth day of his life when he developed an increased respiratory rate widened pulse pressure bounding weak peripheral pulses there is no cyanosis in this case but there is continuous murmur which is pan cystic or pan diastolic machinery murmur which is heard alongside the left sternal border chest x-ray shows increased pulmonary vascular markings so what is the diagnosis in this case this is the case of patent ductus arteriosus so this was whole about the patent ductus arteriosus thank you so much for watching this video